My name is Emily, and I feel compelled to share the harrowing story of how I crossed paths with two ruthless serial killers, Jeffrey Gorton and Paul Durousseau, during their reign of terror in Florida. It was a chilling encounter that still haunts my dreams to this day. The night air was thick with anticipation as I stepped into the dimly lit bar in Tampa. Little did I know that among the crowd, two monstrous figures were watching, their predatory instincts honed to perfection. One of them would soon become a significant part of my life, forever altering the course of my destiny. As I spent time with Jeffrey Gorton, little hints of his sinister side began to emerge. Each time he smiled, I couldn't help but feel a chill crawl down my spine, but I dismissed it as mere paranoia. The news of a serial killer on the loose barely registered in my mind, never suspecting that he could be the one responsible for the grisly murders. Unbeknownst to me, Jeffrey had a macabre fascination with strangulation. His victims suffered horrifyingly agonizing deaths, their lives cruelly snuffed out by his hands. As the body count rose, the authorities grew more desperate to catch the elusive killer, and my life was about to take a terrifying turn. One night, as we were driving together, the flashing blue and red lights pierced the darkness behind us. My heart raced as the police officer approached our car. Jeffrey's charming demeanor vanished, replaced by an unsettling coldness. My pulse quickened, and I had a gut feeling that something was horribly wrong. In a heartbeat, Jeffrey produced a wicked-looking knife, its glint in the moonlight sending shivers down my spine. He held it to my throat, a sinister smile twisting his face. My breath caught in my throat as I realized the extent of his darkness. He warned the officer to back off, threatening to end my life if they dared to interfere. Panic engulfed me, and I found myself paralyzed with fear. I was trapped in the confines of a car with a man capable of unspeakable horrors, and there seemed to be no escape from this living nightmare. If you enjoy our content, please like and subscribe. If you have any true crime suggestions and opinion towards the case, please leave a comment down below. Enjoy the rest of the video. The tension reached its peak, and shots rang out into the night air. Time seemed to slow as I struggled to comprehend what was happening. In a moment of heart-stopping chaos, Jeffrey's life came to a violent end during the confrontation with the police. The officer's brave actions saved my life and countless others, but the horror was far from over. As I tried to piece my life back together, the news of another serial killer haunted Florida. Paul Durousseau, a lurking predator, was prowling the same streets I once walked. His method of killing was equally chilling, leaving a trail of horror in his wake. I couldn't escape the feeling that I was being hunted, and the nightmares refused to relent. Late one evening, as I walked home from work, I felt eyes on me. I turned around to see a familiar face emerging from the darkness. It was Paul Durousseau, disguised as an ordinary passerby. The icy chill of fear ran down my spine, and I knew I had to act fast. Paul's relentless pursuit felt like a never-ending nightmare. He stalked me like a shadow, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. My life became a constant game of survival, and I had to trust my instincts to escape his clutches. As the clock ticked down, I knew I was running out of time. With my heart pounding in my chest, I managed to find a police officer on patrol just in time. But the menacing glint in Paul's eyes as I glanced back told me that I had narrowly escaped becoming another victim on his growing list. The authorities acted swiftly, but the trauma of those dark encounters continued to haunt my every waking moment. To this day, I live with the knowledge that evil can walk among us, hidden behind smiles and charm. My heart goes out to all the victims and their families, and I pray that they find solace and healing in the face of unimaginable darkness. My hope is that sharing this story will raise awareness, and no one else will ever have to endure the horrors that I did in those dark, treacherous times in Florida.